Okay, this is a uh, Aka Ipu. It's called. It's a gourd that they cut the top off and they use for carrying water in their in their Aka baskets. And so Apulopo Pulojona to Amihum Ta I Ichu. So when when the ceremony day comes. You take three water gourds and you put them in your aka basket and you go out really early and you get water and you bring them back and that's for the ceremonies that you'll do that day. And so that's the aka water gourd and in this part of the country in Tennessee they hang them up and they cut a hole right here and they make uh, bird uh, houses out of them. You'll see bunches of them painted white hanging up. Um, but we're going to make this into an aka water gourd. So agato. We, we so you're gonna cut it. You're gonna cut it off about right here. Uh, no, John. No, John. Okay. So she says you cut it off and you put water in it and you shake it up and get the seeds out and you shake, rinse water through it a couple times and then you let it set a couple of weeks and air out and then you, from then on you use it for hauling water. So that's what we're going to do with this one. <clears throat> so you very common someone to hand you one of these in an aka hut and have you drink water out of it. And it's in the in the water, the water. There's probably a little evaporation goes on the outside, so the water inside stays stays cold. We are in the uh, ozone, and we're going to make a hole in the ozone and get the flock out of here. It's snowing already. We get down to Rockwood, about nine miles. Hey Hampton, you ready to go, man? You 25 pound sweet feed eating machine? Yeah. See what you got for me? Well, I always want to make a good flick for a horror story, you know. We already got the personalities here. You know, cutting the shub with a big old knife. Yeah. An old lady hanging from a tree in the backyard. A one eyed ghoul. Jack the Ripper. Zodiac Cure. They can all film, film this here, you know, because the place is already freaked out anyway. You know, it's like uh, the ozone, or maybe they can make it like a love town, you know, like ozone. Let people come here and pitch their tents and make love, have a big love fest here or something. Don't fall through the hole in your ozone, you know. That house over there in the hill, that'd make a great spook house, you know, great stories. Somebody ought to, like, promote this town, man. And look, I tied him behind the double-doored outhouse. Look at that. No wonder it freaked the lady out. But don't you go up knocking on anybody's doors. Heck, it was only 5 o'clock in the evening. Don't you go knocking on anybody's doors. They're liable to shoot you. Even Hampton don't like it. They're liable to shoot you. That's the introduction we got to Ozone. Hampton, he don't like the town either. There's old Opal's place. She might even have a double barrel shotgun like I. Any which way but loose, you know. Leave a poor old defenseless lady. And this is a lady who said, someone's going to shoot you, you keep going knock on their door, ask for directions, you know. Hospitality. And this is where I left my saddle. 30 seconds, man, it was going to be gone. Ozone Baptist Church. That's right. And the tanning bed is open. Come tan your ass in Ozone, Tennessee. Tanning bed is open. One man already in the bed. <laughs> <laughs> what a crazy town. Well, Opal, you rest in peace. Don't let the goblins get you. That house over there, that's great, man. That would make such a story, that house in Ozone. I hope all you movie directors are watching. Come to Ozone, Tennessee. You got all the personality and none of the, none of the film. Just waiting to happen. Somebody goes and stays the night in ozone, they can't get out, you know. The car gets shot up. Someone tries to knife them in their sleep. Oh, yeah. The ozone. Just don't leave your saddle on the road. And this could be the sheriff's office, who at night turns into a really creepy serial killer wannabe.
they should find the contractor, the architect that makes those dormers and break his legs. You have any idea how hard those things are to maintain for the little bit of light they give? You can make a gable on the house. Be better than that crap. There's a real estate sign up that's for sale. It looks like it was going to be a church at first. Over here in the left wing. But uh, come on, you put those silly ass dormers up there and they are a freaking pain in the ass to maintain them. Besides, they look real cheesy. You know it's not an old house. It didn't got enough style to it. This is a nice ride down through here today, but I'm a little bit worried about snow getting on this road because it's pretty steep. Snow or ice. Add up, you know. Getting the bus down it. A little bit worries me. Mammy's Creek. You see, yesterday we passed Daddy's Creek, and here's Mammy's Creek. They must have had to live on different creeks to get along. You see a little bit of change in the trees. We got cedars in here. Or fir. Hard telling what they are. I'm no tree expert. So I started blowing this ice crap on the road, man. So I parked Hampton. Up here in Withal, or Withnell, whatever little town, and uh, guy gave me a quick ride back to Ozone and got the bus and got out of the Ozone, headed for Rockwood. He told me the same thing. He said, I had dropped the chainsaw off my truck and I turned around and went back, it's already gone. He said, Then some guy was pawning it. And I went over and, yep, that's my chainsaw, and I took it and told him the heck with you, taking someone else's chainsaw, trying to sell it. He says this area is real poor, so people grab everything they see as soon as they see it. Don't mean you have to be dumb. Yay, snow! Kids are going, yay, snow, and I'm going, oh, yuck, snow, no traction, going off the road, unsafe conditions, and they're going, yay, snow, give us more snow! Yeah, right, guys, appreciate it. <laughs> Town of Westall. Yeah, we're gonna head down to Rockwood and I'll come back and get Hampton. You don't see many old railroad trestles like this either. Westell, Tennessee. It's great, they're doing repair work on it. Good on them, man. Nice to see something get repaired in America. Instead of letting it all go to hell all the time. Especially the trains. This country's totally lacking in vision about the trains, man. All the millions, probably billions of dollars that went into building the National Railroad. The labor, Chinese labor, every labor you can imagine. People smashing their hands and freezing in the cold. And then people nowadays don't appreciate it and they just let the trains go to junk. One railroad to sell off a spur line so they can raise the price of their stocks. Spur line goes into ruin. Trains rusting beside the road. Having everything made in China. You think there's a future in that? You're joking. Over there they turned uh, trains into, into houses. Must be a working railroad cars or something. This is Rockwood, Tennessee. Got some old buildings over there. We're going to find us a supermarket and park the bus and I'll go back for Hampton. Looks like old railroad town. The sign coming into town says, we encourage industry. Wish the rest of America did too. An old caboose. Pizza station. Interstate, a river, and a railroad. And the guy on the shore told me, he goes, he goes, I have Walmart shut down, this town is shut down. That's the only thing that keeps the town going is Walmart. He's our happy little girl enjoying the day off. Yeah. Up here. Well, Vivian and the little red Mini Cooper 
You see I hitched back up to the bus, got the bus, moved it down to Rockwood to come then she gave me a ride from Rockwood back up to Westell. I got the horse and we're headed back to Rockwood now. So the bus is where it needs to be. We can take our time, take us about two hours to get there. And so uh yeah, we get a little bit of snow, but at least it, the bus is already where it needs to be. So here's the railroad bridge over that river. Big old rock down in there, man. I'd feel a little shaky about running my train loaded with lime over that thing. So they're rebuilding it with concrete. We are coming into Rockwood. This is the famous wrecking yard at the corner of the 27 and 70. There you go. Keep your wheels on the ground. There's a lot of rigs here, man. Probably thousands of them. You can find a part to anything you want. A lot of new vehicles. Sell some meth, buy a new rig, get drunk, flip it, smash it. Get out alive if you're lucky. Here comes the train. Got at least one train in the country still working. Interesting stuff on it. Nebraska boiler. Bunch of company houses all lined up on this road. Yeah, this is a great little town of Rockwood. Still got some life left. They still got roofs in the buildings compared to some towns in Texas. Regions Bank, an old bank in town. Of course, it was in Regions, first national bank when it started. Great building. First national debt. So we'll put up here for a day, maybe longer. Hi, <laughs> Pium. <laughs> Hampton gets his sweet feed. He guys got no shame. He stands in his own feed sometimes. So happy. Take a day off here anyway. Let this storm blow over. Well, I'm the last customer, I think, in uh, this little restaurant in downtown Rockwood, Tennessee. But I'll be back tomorrow. And their berry cobbler is fantastic. Only second to the hospitality. Nice place. This is a Rockwood Street Grill in uh, Rockwood, Tennessee. And we got one slick road, man. I am glad I'm off that hill. Now we'll take a day off here, so let this stuff melt off before we move on. Tonight we're in uh, Rockwood, Tennessee, and uh, I got halfway here, and I had to tie Hampton up and go back and get the bus. 
and then drive the bus down to Rockwood first because the mountain was going to ice up. And then I went back and got Hampton. Well, the lady who gave the saddle and me a lift last night, uh, Vivian, she stopped by with her little mini Red Cooper that's so nice. And she gave me a lift from Rockwood back up to, uh, well, halfway in between. I can't remember the town's name up there. Uh, and uh, I rode Hampton back down. So I sure appreciate that because it was a, you know, simple, made the day simpler not to have to hitch it, it, it all. So anyway, I appreciate that. And I come down and I visit in town a little bit. And uh, Hampton's got a good place of grass tonight here behind the. Napa store in uh, the old gas station Napa store in uh, Rockwood and um, Rockwood like a lot of American communities is hurting because there's not enough industry and they're struggling to keep their downtown alive which I think Rockwood's doing a pretty good job of but uh, I mean this is town after town in America that you go through and you see how hard of a time they're having and uh, Vivian asked me she said what do you think having been to China what do you think about everything we buy now is made in China and I told her I said you know it's not sustainable you can't run a, a sovereign country this way you can't stop making everything that you use and buy it from somebody else it, it, you're gonna have to hawk your entire country to be able to afford to keep buying stuff without working for it and producing it yourself so uh, uh, all these towns that are struggling, I mean, uh, the way I see it, uh, in general, when I see so many towns that are uh, depleted, is that America, the way it's running things, is basically bankrupt. And the moral leadership of the government, the people that run the government, uh, the Senate and the Congress, that's bankrupt too. Uh, if I was to put a number on it, I'd say something like 65% decay. Uh, everywhere I go, there's empty buildings, uh, buildings abandoned, buildings for lease, for rent, with nobody in them. Uh, you see all these railroad tracks torn up and gone. Um, if you want to lower energy dependence, you move freight by rail. You, you invest in, in rail lines, double rail lines, one going east, one going west. You, double up all your rail lines and you do repairs and you make it a national priority to cut your fuel consumption that way. Um, but you just can't tell me that everything has to be made in China and then Americans would just uh, live the good life and, uh, uh, and buy everything and that that's the way it's going to go on. They're, they got a rail line running through Rockwood, it's still going, you can hear the whistle. Um, and the Franklin Lime Company up there by Crab Orchard, uh, it's got part of the line and it's uh, maintaining the bridges on that. But there's going to have to be a real basic change in America for America to get strong, lively towns again. Uh, the, the incentives uh, are not there for people in this country to live under lower prices and uh, a vigorous economy. Uh, we don't have a free enterprise system anymore. We have a some kind of system, but it's not free enterprise. Uh, and, and that's going to have to change if there's going to be a hope of turning anything around. Uh, but it's, it's not very encouraging. I see a lot of good people trying to do the best they can, but the general direction that the country's headed in is not encouraging, and I don't see any improvement. And I see the the, the war on terror and the war in Iraq and in Iraq and Afghanistan. That's increasing the hatred for this country by Islamic people, and uh, there's an increased climate of fear and. Uh, you know, the war on terrorism, everywhere you go, you read it about it, about this guy getting on an airplane and trying to blow it up, coming into DC, into uh, Detroit or something. And, uh, I mean, you can only go so far uh, in, in uh, making things safe by having wars. And uh, the, the Pentagon is spending a horrendous amount of money 
and none of that's going back in to build a stronger economy, uh, to, to, to have all these weapon systems. And it may benefit a few towns and a few places, but the average American town, uh, heavy defense spending doesn't help them out. It's not the kind of investment in the communities that is needed.